evening, folks. How are we? I'm just, I'm just reading Historic Pubs of Dublin book um, by Aubrey Malone. So I am um, taking the classes off because I only need. I don't even really need these for reading. Just sometimes my eyesight's not. I think it's to do with the lights or something. My eyesight's okay if I'm decent light, but uh, this just makes things a, a, a bit easier. And the reason I'm reading this is because it's got a thing in it about the palace bar. Yes. I was sent a, a, a rather nice package by the folks at the palace bar. And it was all hush hush last week. Um, and it's because, let me send a little sample of their latest Dunville's Green Label. Bar exclusive, which oh, and they also sent me a little mask. You may have seen this on on the show last night, me and Justin. Which, if you're watching this during the week, it wasn't last night; it was Saturday. Yeah, I uh, I I couldn't actually get into the meeting, the the, the Zoom meeting, the Zoom call. To talk about to talk about the whiskey and do a comparative testing and stuff because it was actually it's actually working for a change. Um, it's a nice clean Cairn glass. I like we always like clean Cairn glass. Uh, yeah. Now, this is a bar only exclusive. I'll just clear some stuff out of here. Um, so the Palace Bar in Dublin. Trust my trusty book. The literary tradition of the Irish pub dates from the 18th century when many publishers had their bookshops and printing offices and buildings which were also taverns. So there you go. Yeah, and it, this entry in this, this book's actually, it's, it's, a, it's one of those books that if you're a tour guide like what I am when we're allowed to do it, uh, that you, you pick up because there's always, there's always little bits and pieces that you can... Duck, in, uh, duck into and, and left out of and, and use. Um, and this basically is telling you all about the literary history of the Palace Bar, which is in Fleet Street. So, uh, Fleet Street in London is more famous for for having a, a literary tradition as well, or reporters, and it's the same, same in, in Dublin back in the day. Um, yeah, so a, a bar only exclusive. Now, it's a 20-year-old single cask from Dunville's. Uh, as we are well aware, we're a big fan of Dunville's. Uh, <laughs> it, most people in whiskey influencer, whatever that, that term means, uh, circles, is a big fan of Dunville's. But there's, there's almost a reluctance to talk about it because... They all sell out, all the single cask stuff sells out in, in, in milliseconds now. But on the secondary market, it doesn't get massive prices. It's slightly, maybe slightly elevated. And the reason is some of the flippers come in to buy them, try and flip them and don't get any money for them. And the other people, like what most influencers are, quite happy to buy them up and have them and open them and drink them because they're really, really, really good. And I don't, uh, I've had a little sip out of this already, just as a, a, as a, a precursor, a pre-warmer. I had it yesterday. Um, so I'm going to pour that into that and let it sit for a little bit. Now, I haven't I haven't done a review for, for... It's actually two weeks because I was actually busy last week um, with, with a, a new employment and stuff. And I was doing some other stuff. So it just... Honestly, we just disappeared like that, and I didn't really have time to get another one in. Um, so I, I, I do, I do uh, beg your pardon. I, I didn't get doing one or a couple last week, but we'll try and make up for it. We'll try and make up for that. Now I'll let this breathe a little bit, even though it's a miniature and it's already been open for a while. But we'll let it swirl about the one thing i will notice is 
but it doesn't come across just as oily as some of the other uh, Dundell's releases. Now this is a green label and I haven't got to the bottom of why it's a green label but uh, it's maybe it needs maybe something to do with the bar exclusives. As I say it's a single cask, cask 1639. There's only 341 bottles of it, 55 percent and it's going to be 350 euros a bottle which in today's money, in today's set of circumstances, that's it's not that expensive. Oloroso cask finished. And Dundell, Dundells have been doing these sherry cask finishes. Uh, Oloroso cask finishes. Um, PX cask finishes. The Palo Cortado cask finishes. So they've been doing a variety of sherry cask finishes. And the one thing that sets them apart is they always seem to have the best quality casks. The, the, the casks that they get are exceptional. There's no doubt about that. They impart a real richness. Um, the, the oils that come out of them, and it gives them the, the, these real nutty flavours and so on and so forth. Now this is Oloroso Sherry. Now Oloroso Sherry it is dry, it's not necessarily that sweet and it's a lot more nutty. Uh, uh, Oloroso Sherry oxidises. Uh, there's a, like a crust forms over the top of it and then oxygen gets in through, the, basically through the wood, it's pulling, pulling uh, wood in through the, or the air in through the cask and it oxidises so it, it it gets all these real sort of nutty flavours and, and so on. Now this on the nose is really quite fresh and it, it's got a light peanut it's got those nuts but they're quite light they're not they're not heavy and there's a, a candy sweetness not overly sweet i have to say it's not overly sweet it's just a nice fruit sweetness at the end there on the nose and on the way through you're getting blossom it's, it's, it's quite floral on the way through so it starts nutty then it goes through this sort of nice floral sort of cherry blossom-esque thing and then it gets lifted at the end with the candy sweetness um, it doesn't have the typical oily Raisiny, uh, plum, deep fruits that Dunville's kind of has a reputation for. It's different, but it, it it's got a really nice nose on it. it. The nose that's coming through, it's a nice balance to it. It's not overly, it's not overly weighty, but it's just got that nice level balance to it where you can you can sit and just. Get little hints of other things. Wouldn't say it's the best nose I've ever tried in my life. You know, it, it it's very pleasant, but it just sort of just wafts in rather than rather than presenting itself. It just sort of comes at you. You know, does this sort of nice little wafting into you rather than jumping out at you. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a little sip. Again, lots of sweetness, like the initial point of it, it comes in, is sweet, just at the start, and that quickly goes away, and it becomes much more floral, uh, and 
bits of spice coming into it, again, nuttiness coming through to it on the finish. Lovely finish, lovely finish. It's got a wonderful finish, it really does. And I had this chat with a guy a few weeks ago about what's the most important part of a whiskey. And there's lots of combinations for that. Lots of things that people can get focused on and, and think about. And, you know, the design of the bottle is important. The, the, the story behind it, the provenance, if you like, the, the bouquet, the nose on it, the taste. And taste is very overrated, in my opinion. Because when, this is 55%, and when 55% comes into your, your, your mouth, when it gets there, there's really not, the flavour taste goes quite quickly. Okay, and then you're onto the finish, and that's a, that's a different thing. And the finish, for me, is really the important bit. Because it's that development, and you get, when... You get your initial taste with the front, up front, the delivery of it is one thing. After that, this development, that's where that's where the real magic is for me. Um, I know other people are, have different opinions, and certainly that that's the way of the world. Good, absolutely. But for me, the finish is the most important part of the whole experience, because it's what's it develops and moves on and gives you. Flavors. I mean, I I still am getting touches of this, and that that's that's a minute ago, two minutes ago. I had a, a sip of this. And it's been out, and again, the, the, this is coming in more sort of spring flowers now, or sort of meadow fresh, and it's at the perfect time of the year. Although if it was a bit warmer, it would be nice. I mean weather weatherwise by the way. See that? Now there's almost a lemon honeyness there. On the finish. It's just this nice sort of wafting through of flavours. Little bits of spice, a little bit of cinnamon. Definitely nice nice peppering of cinnamon coming through. Again, the floralness that that this this works really well in 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 a nice clear sunny day you could sit down with this and have it uh, just uh, it'd be the perfect time to do it i want to say have it out you're having a little picnic or something but you're lots of places you're not allowed to drink out in the open so don't be doing that and getting yourself arrested and saying oh that marty boy told me to do it no it didn't but you, you get what i'm saying sitting out having a, a, a lounging in the sun this would work a treat and now this is another thing that happens sometimes when you pick something up in the finish you nose it again and it appears there so because i taste it the lemon and the that little bit of except this finish that sharpness i'm now beginning to get it on the nose and again more nuts coming through again Again, there's that little candy sweetness. It, there's a little bit of heading towards like a marmalade rather than the jam that you get from from the the Dunville's own single casks, their their own releases, which are all quite heavy, quite jammy, really oily. This isn't like that. I mean, I'll, I'll let you see the colour. Okay, so they don't use colour and never do. And they've sort of vowed that they never will. Mm. Mm -hmm. I really like that. It's nice. It's really nice. Um, see, single casts I find a little bit of a strange thing to score. It's a hard thing to score these because it's an individual cask, so it's kind of hard to put the scores on individual casks. When you come to single malts and blends and stuff, that it's a bit easier. But a single cask is a single cask. Um, 
and it's in some ways it's kind of unfair. One thing I did do, I, I will give it a score, but give me a minute. Um, I've left that down a wee plate of olives because I tried to taste it as last night, and I thought that might actually work quite well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That works quite well, actually, yeah. As I say, this would be a spring-summer whiskey. Nice. You know, if you're playing a bit of tennis or something, you know, have one of them. Have this. Watch, watch the people playing tennis. You can see yourself doing that. You're over in England, maybe I draw the cricket. Well, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm well, going to give this a score. It's 350 euros. So it's... It's up there. Um, I'll give it a good, solid... I won't... I'll have to give it an 8. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. But folks, they, these are just how I feel just at the minute and sort of making stuff up as I go along after doing the tasting. Um, if you ask me again later on, it could be higher or lower. But for single casks, it's kind of hard to give a score because there's not there's other things you can kind of compare them to. And that's really what you're doing when you're giving somebody a number. Um, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Like most of the stuff out of Tom Bill's. Um, I'm glad he started seeing them doing uh, bar only bottlings so keep up the good work everybody down there and uh, stay safe everybody enjoy yourselves take care